Hi guys. Um, we're gonna start now. Um, my name is Latoya Kabusi. Um, so I created a club, We the Youth, which created this event. Youth Poetry BIPOC. Um, for too long, young people of color have been silent. Not because we had nothing to say, but for survival and white comfort. This event is not just for people of color to share their stories, it is also for young people of color to listen and understand you are not alone. A lot of the times we feel isolated, because we're the only ones that look like us in classrooms, jobs, sports, and clubs. I am here today to show you that you are not alone. Your feelings are more than valid, even though living in the suburbs makes you feel the opposite of that. This event is also for white adults to understand that you will never be able to understand us. School guidance counselors will never be able to understand us. School psychologists will never be able to understand us. Teachers will never be able to understand us. So the least you can do is listen. This is a welcome back to school orientation. New rules and no filters. We, the youth, believe that we are the future. Believe kindness is key. Believe listening means open mind. Believe conversation is change. This event is going to, this event is not going to be the last you see of us. When BLM dies down because it's not in your convenience anymore, we will still be singing the same song. But anyways, today is a celebration for young people of color. Today, we will acknowledge young people of color because we do not do it enough. But before, I, but before we start the celebration, I want you to meet the host. It's crazy how she is here. She's a brilliant poet from Rhode Island, but does most of her work around Boston. In 2019, she won the New England Hip Hop Woman of the Year Award. She performed at the Elizabeth Stewart Garden Museum the Institution of Contemporary Arts, and the Museum of Fine Arts. She has been in multiple podcasts and TV broadcasts. Please give a warm welcome to the beautiful and smart Amanda Shea. take LaToya everywhere I go from now on because that was an amazing intro. Thank you, LaToya. And thank you everyone for being here this evening. This is absolutely amazing. Uh, just real quick, I'm just going to explain how this all came about and why I'm here. So I am a spoken word artist. I am a host, a curator, an organizer, and I am also an educator. I work in Roxbury, Dorchester, JP, and Hyde Park. I am a mother of two, preteens and a teenager. I'm not gonna call my youngest son a teenager yet because he's only 12, so I wanna give myself a little bit of a breather. But I have a 16-year-old and a 12-year-old son who do not look like me. They're a different shade of black. So it's important for me, as LaToya had said, that representation is key. LaToya, has impressed me in so many ways. Kema too, I don't know where you are right now, but yes, you as well. They have coordinated and curated where we're sitting right now in this moment. They have done their research. They have been so professional in every single step of this. When Latoya DM'd me through social media, she said to me, can you hear me? I hear you. I see you. A little louder. Thank you for that. When she DM'd me, she said, I've been researching spoken word artists and artists doing the work in the communities in Boston. 
And I was just like, what? Where are you from? She said, Reading, Massachusetts. Now imagine me reading this in JP. Just imagine. That's how strong our reach is. And it far stretches outside of just Massachusetts, outside of the US, but we can globally make impact and change. And what LaToya and Kimma have started and created is just a fraction of what they're capable of doing. So I'm honored to be here. Thank you for having me. I was, there was no way I was not coming here today. So without further ado, I wanna bring up our first speaker. I'm honored to just be introducing everybody that's on today. I want to welcome to the mic, Kevin. Can we all give a big round of applause for Kevin, please? everyone. Um, first and foremost, um, if we can do something that in many ways rightfully um, honors the main stars of today's incredible inspiring event, if we can take a moment right now, if you are a young person that identifies as black, indigenous, or a person of color, if you could stand up, if you are able to, if you can stand up right now. Now, as y'all could see and tell that as educators, as adults, we love to, in many ways, um, do things just a little bit too fast. Um, and I say that because I think as adults, we owe it to ourselves to look at the young people who are standing up. And because this is our town, because these are your students, because it's outside, again, we reserve this spot. So as loud as you can, cheer, clap, for your students in doing this incredible work on this incredible day. As loud as you can, please give them a round of applause. Keep it going, keep it going, folks. can say that it's not often outside of an auditorium, it's not often outside of a sporting event where young people, our, our students, are able to receive such praise and love simply because they did something outside of the norm. Praise and love simply because they went out of their way. No incentive related to grades, to food, to money, no incentive centered on this is going to, I mean, yes, this will look good in co on college. Um, but for the pure fact that these students, during a pandemic, during a time where the school year is so uncertain, not just here in Reading, but across this nation, that they came together, they communicated with each other, they organized, they Embody the true essence of youth-led proposing, brainstorming, 
processing, participating, the sound, the art, the support, all students, simply because they realize that it was so vital, especially before the school year, it was so vital for them to let you know who they were, how they are, what they're feeling, that they matter every single day, every single month, even during summer break. And so when I was asked to participate as an adult, I don't take it lightly. It's an honor to be asked by the leaders of today and tomorrow to hopefully amplify what they deserve every single day. So even though I am not a teacher here, even though I teach over in Cambridge, anytime I see young people, especially black indigenous and people of color, doing this type of work to validate who they are, to let them know that their joy is precious, that any trauma that they experience need to be addressed, validated, and resolved, Anytime I'm able to be in a space, I will always try my best to let them know that I am proud and I support everything and anything they do. So, because I'm a little bit rusty, when Latoya asked me to share some words, I asked if I could give a poem. Um, and with her permission. Um, this is a poem I have, especially for this event here this evening. Black Lives Matter, said the Asian girl who's looking at her father's black and white photo album when he was her age outside a 1940s concentration camp barbed wire fence. Stop calling it the damn China virus, yelled yelled the Latin ex-boy at the TV during another White House briefing. May Allah be with you. May Allah be with them. Pray the students for their DACA classmates, for their Mecco best friend. Say her name, son the black teenager who was writing Breonna Taylor's name, not just on the sidewalk, but on a petition letter as well for justice. Free them so they can go to school with us. Chanted the students for the kids who were their ages in cages at the border still. Love is colorfully lovely for me and her and him and him and them that they all said in unison. I am proud to be a Native American on my native ground, shared virtually by a Native American as an icebreaker on the first day of school with everyone's mics on mute as everyone nodded and mouthed. You're right, you're right, this is your land. Whether you're black, whether you are from an indigenous community, whether you're Asian, whether you're an individual who looks in the mirror and you see beauty, even when there are many people outside of that space that you're looking at that mirror may say that you're ugly. When you are interacting with your friends, your classmates, and you're learning and you're growing and you're putting on events, centered on amplifying your voice, even when it feels that someone slightly older, whether you know them or not, may tell you to lower your voice. If you're a young person and you are trying to figure out every tweet you read, every TikTok video you see, every headline you see flash onto your screen, how does this impact you? What can you do? You may not be old enough to vote, but it doesn't mean that you don't have a voice. 
So it is important as an adult, I say this, just like every adult here has probably said this to you in one way, shape, or form. All of this is for you. We follow your lead. We make sure that we are not just your allies, but we are your co-conspirators. We are your accomplices. We don't give you the microphone. It's yours. So it is the hope that today and moving forward, though I won't be teaching you all, from the educators that I've been lucky to interact with, they are looking forward to listening and learning and teaching and encouraging you all. Because this year is going to be so many uncertainties, but there's one thing that is truly uncertain, and you can look around this evening. Young people, black, indigenous people of color, they are truly a powerful force doing the good work every single day. And as adults, we can ever be so fortunate to cheer and support them on from now until forever. Another round of applause to Kevin. Before I bring up our next speaker, because I don't believe we're here for a performance, we're here to just listen, as Latoya had said. Can everybody just close their eyes for one moment and just take three deep breaths with me? I want you to just like listen. Kevin not only said a lot in his speech, which we thank you, Kevin, but also in his poem. So everyone just please take their, just a couple of minutes, close your eyes, take three deep breaths with me. Ready? open your eyes. We're all human beings. So we vibrate on the same frequency as each other because we're made up of 70% of water. So if you think about it, when you hear sounds, they vibrate through the water. It's exactly how we work in everyday life. So you know, you hear the kids say, no bad vibes, or we say negative energy. We're emitting something off of either ourselves to someone else or someone is omitting it to us. So just remember that. Now, I'm gonna introduce our next speaker, Sebastian. everyone's good. Um, I don't really know how to start these, so I'm going to just read it. Um, <clears throat> yeah, but you're not like the others. What do you mean by that? The others. The ones who you frown upon so absurdly? The ones who are just criminals? The ones who are quote-unquote aliens? The ones who take your jobs? The ones who sag their pants? The ones who sell drugs? The ones whose names you spit upon? But I am like them. I eat from the same plates. I eat from the same table with the same song, singing the same traditional outfits worn. I speak from the same tongue that makes your heart look away in disdain. I carry the same genetic phenotype that screams, I am illegal to you. I am them. They are me. I am them. I want you to see that. I want you to see the quote unquote same guns they carry. I want you to see the same boxer brand peeking from these baggy shorts. I want you to see these hold up shoes from moving our homes here. I want you to see me with the same food carts they carry. I want you to see me with the same clothing that makes you so uncomfortable. 
because there's no difference between me and them. I am them. They are me. You do not get to hate my own people and tell me, no, it's okay. It's not about you. No, it's not okay. Yes, it is about me. like all of your energy. Once again, this is another youth, so please give it up for Sebastian. <laughs> so can I just give a show of hands of anybody who's ever had to speak in public? Show of hands. That's a lot of you. How daunting is it though, seriously? Like you don't know anybody here, you're not really sure, you're kind of nervous, you're scared. Some of us, like myself, have anxiety, social anxiety, that none of us really like talk about publicly, but we put in these positions where we have to speak so we give our all. So I want you to remain uh, cognizant of this for the rest of this, okay? We're here until about 7.30, so anytime you see a youth step up here, grab the mic, give them all of your love that you possibly can. This is really, really difficult to do, but also it's also encouraging for them to be able to do this further in their future, right? Cool. Everybody having a good time? Yes. We have a whole lineup of like incredible, incredible youth. I'm super impressed. I've been doing poetry for about three years professionally. I used to be an accountant, completely quit my job, and became a full-time artist. How do you think my mom's response was then to that? She was like, what? Um, you make really good money, why would you wanna do that? <laughs> um, most artists are broke. I assure you, I stand before you that artists are not broke. In fact, we're rich, and not in money, but in spirit, but in love, but encouragement, determination, and family, and connections. It's not about money, it's about how we spend our time here on this planet and how we treat one another. We are mere reflections of one another. So I just want you to remember that once again for the rest of this evening. I believe we're gonna have our second performer up to the, speaker, 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 up to the mic. Is Jonathan ready to take the mic? Yes, perfect. I told y'all, y'all gotta give it up, give it up, give it up, give it up, give it up. We wanna hear you and feel you. So, um, I'm just gonna like get my recordings. Oh, uh, oh sorry. Oop, boop, boop. There, it's on there. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, one, thank you for being here. Thank you for allowing me to um, share some poem that I'm going to, uh, it's actually kind of like a affirmation sort of for people who feel oppressed at these times, most specifically black people. Um, and I have some like poetry that I, maybe I can read like that is just more personal to me and I just want to use that as an example to be yourself. I mean, oh, can you hear me? Uh, can you hear me? Yeah. All right. Great. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to read the first one. Uh-oh. Um, seeing, th oh, let me turn my phone off. Uh, seeing things as black or white, difficult difficulties navigating the gray, questioning if I should say goodbye to those who don't fully understand my reality, or should I fight the good fight and stay? What's, who said fighting for justice and equality would be easy? Do I educate the people who genuinely want to be better? I question, how can I do that and still 
grieve like this? How can I do that if I'm not where I need to be internally, financially, mentally, and even spiritually? I'm always relieving trauma, healing, every time I speak to someone. And it's hard when it has to do with privilege, with the, complexi the complexities around com privilege. I feel sometimes oppressed by those with the most privilege. It's hard to let my guard down. It's hard to connect with someone. I'm trying to dismantle this defeated mindset and find the power within myself and find the power within others through connection. I'm trying to bridge the gap between these different worlds, these different backgrounds, all while my double consciousness kicks in. This is my reality as a black man, but a sense of hope lingers inside me. I do it for my black community, for our community. It takes love and it takes empathy. I'm gonna say that again. It takes love and it takes empathy. So we rise. more personal to me um, and it's less about like the movement so just remember for all of those out there who like sometimes feel like for me personally I felt like oh where do I show up in this movement how do I keep this movement alive how do I keep the momentum going and I have to remember that it's actually in my heart it's in my DNA my beingness the fact that I'm alive the fact that I breathe air in every day and, and feel for others and want to be connected is an act of radical um, uh, rebellion. <laughs> so, um, yeah. and then just I'm gonna read the phone and I'll be, and then and, uh, it'll be it. Um, okay, so what, what can we write? It's just like I, I'm, I'm working on reading my poems more because I usually just write them down. Um, so, I'm gonna read this one, it's cool. It's about a uh, love, because I always write about love. And I've realized I always want about wanting love, but it's always, it's here. It's, um, it's through my family, it's through the support systems, it's through my friends. Um, so, in my meditation, it was certain, constructively. So I thank the heavens for the earth in your smell, for a fire that ignited your beautiful bronze glowing skin for water that washed your hands pure. I dove into your arms like a baby to breast, like a ray of sunshine to a beautiful flower. And from the gossip, this, the wind, I heard we would meet. We would be contested, but we would be fated. The catch would be the meeting place at the gateway of the moon or inside the sun cosmically intertwined there. And still, here I am, fed up with you, your earthly indifference, resigned by your blindness to my open heart. I revel in our stolen glances. I fantasize about our, my lips gently scoring your cheek, honor, honoring your hands emblazoned on my chest. That is what we will be here, the idea of what we are, predicated by the electricity of our touch. <laughs> thank you, thank you. So we have somebody else coming up, I don't know who it is, but thank you so much for your time, and keep hope alive, like we can do this together. You are magical. Everyone, please give a big round of applause to Jonathan. Real life. And I just want to say something in front of everybody. When you said, I write down my poems and I'm practice reading them, keep doing it. You are incredible and your message needs to be heard. So keep doing it. Um, so, 
I feel bad because I have like poor poetry etiquette right now. Um, what we do, because like I said, I live in JP, um, but I service and perform like everywhere I could honestly say, but mainly when we're in Boston, JP, Dorchester, all of our spaces. I'm, I'm looking at my partner over there because over there shaking their head. Um, yeah, that's it. We usually be like, woo! Yes! Clap, clap, snap, snap. So poetry fingers. So anytime you hear something that resonates or it's just like, mmm, you can always snap. You can clap. Just let it out. You know what I mean? Just give that encouragement. So I'm over there poetry snapping for Jonathan, poetry snapping for Kevin, <laughs> poetry snapping for everyone. So get those spirit fingers working, okay? Get those poetry finger snaps. We don't have an emoji yet, but I promise you, we're working on it. Um, <laughs> are y'all ready for your next speaker? I need all of the energy. We're outside. All of the energy. Please welcome to the stage. No, no. So, you know, with all that's going on, God has to be the forefront of everything we do. So, all right. Heavenly Father, I thank you for bringing each and every single one of us in here. I thank you for each and every single life in here. I thank you for your love, your grace, and your mercy. I pray that you give me the confidence to say what I have to say. In your heavenly name, I pray, amen. talk about I'm not even gonna lie to you guys but um <laughs> I thought about it I thought about it I thought about it and I was like what's going on right now to us in the world and I was like all right we're getting killed by cops like <laughs> like that like I'm so serious like it's actually really scary to get pulled over by a cop because you just don't know what mood they're in today or who they are today like who were you raised by so, I think about George Floyd's like story a lot because I remember telling a cop I can't breathe. You know, I was 21 at a hotel party with my friends, getting drunk, you know, totally legal. Um, and the hotel staff wanted to shut it down. They called the cops. They show up and like, you know, mad cops, <laughs> dogs in the hallway, like, they were ready, whatever. And you know, I made a little joke, he was like, you guys gotta leave, and I'm like, ha ha, you gotta leave. You know, like, <laughs> all right, <laughs> shouldn't have said that to the cops, you know, and then I turned my back, and next thing I know, I was pepper sprayed it down to the ground. And I'm still kinda drunk, you know, I drink some, some Syrah that night, some Henny. So I was like, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. I don't want to give up my other arm. You only got one arm, ha, ha, ha. You're not getting my other arm. <laughs> yeah, that wasn't too smart. We fought for a while. I remember the cop picking up his knee and kept just dropping it on my head. Like, just like full force. I remember at one point I was like, all right, if you don't give up your hand right now, you're already pepper sprayed, you can't see, and you really can't breathe. And I and I felt myself slip for a little bit, and then I came back, and I was like, all right, let me just get my hand, let me just get my hand, like, here, just have it, just have it, just have it, like, it's not even that serious. So, you know, like, they arrested me, I was wearing a skirt and a tube top, right? You <laughs> You're doing all that, you're basically nude at this point. I was wearing a thong and, you know, I had a bra on. But I was basically nude. My homegirl was like, can I just, like, fix her? Just, and they were like, sit down. Okay, all right, all right, all right. So she sat down because I was already arrested. They arrested my sister, so I don't think we needed someone. Who's going to pay the bail and who's going to call my mama? Like, who's calling mommy because someone needs to bail me out? So, 
Um, they like, they drag me out the hallway and I'm saying to them I can't breathe because I mean, if you've ever been pepper sprayed, you can't see and like it's a lot of stuff in your throat. So it, it was a lot. So they drag me down the hallway, I get to the stairs. At that point, I'm like so exhausted. It was already a long night. I had every intention of sleeping at the hotel. So like, I was turned, you know, whatever. And so like, we go down, they drag me down the stairs and call me the H word. And I was like, oh, did you see me doing something that those type of people do in this hotel? Or did you see a 21 year old partying? Told me shut up. I was like, all right. <laughs> Drag me outside. I stood outside for like what felt like forever by the cop car. I finally get in. They book me. This whole time, I'm, I'm outside saying I can't breathe. Like, I'm. <sighs> and I can't breathe, dog. Like, I legitimately can't breathe. And they're just like, nobody's caring. I can't see their expressions or anything, but they didn't care. And then they put me in the cop car and we drove off to the Brockton police station and I got in, they fingerprinted me, took my mugshot. I couldn't even see myself taking my mugshot. I couldn't see it. I, I never seen the picture, but I bet you my eyes are closed. I, I'm 100% I'm positive they're closed. And that's when they finally gave me some water. They finally gave me some water and let me splash my face. Thanks. They finally let me like have some shoes on my feet. I had no shoes on. They gave me some sweatpants, sent me off to the holding cell with like a napkin, like a couple paper napkins that I took out. I didn't even get a towel or nothing, you know. And I just sat in that cell. And every time I cried, like it burned my tears burned so like imagine getting arrested you're low-key drunk and you're sitting in a jail cell and you can't breathe and you can't even cry i couldn't cry so i was like all right whatever my mom I, they finally let me out probably like 8 a.m maybe 9. my mom's been there for like hours waiting to like let me go the cop that car that i was in was like just be quiet don't make a huss a fuss and you'll be able to go home tonight and you know i already knew what that meant it meant like just take whatever don't make like don't say nothing more than what you've already said like just and we're always told to be shh, shh. sorry I sh <laughs> And I finally left, had bruises all over my face. Mom's like, we should go to the hospital. And I'm like, I just want to go home. I just want to take a shower. I just want to forget this day. But then I couldn't forget the day because I had to keep going to court, paying money for court. I didn't even have, I did not have the money, like thousands of dollars in court fees, put on probation for an officer assaulting me. They didn't even show it to the courthouse. <laughs> all right, whatever. So anyways, long story short, I say this story because a little bit about me is, my name is Nuika, I love so no. um, but some people do know me as Nuika around here. I went to school out here from first grade to seventh grade. And just imagine, and, and I probably got fed by someone in this, this place, like, you know what I mean? So imagine me, your daughter, had to go all through that and got, Still, like, just having fun as being 21 year old and drunk. Imagine the dumb things you did when you were 21 and drunk. When you were 18 and drunk, when you had no business drinking. But because I was a black girl, woman, I'm 5'9", at the time I was weighing like three something, so I was big. Er. <laughs> you know, and that's how, that's how they chose to take me. But if I was a slim, blonde hair, blue eyes, I'm pretty sure the cop would have laughed with me too. And it's not fair. 
You know what I mean? Like, we already are taken back financially. We got taken away from where we came from. There's just so many mistreatment. And then, like, they're gentrifying our communities. They don't even care for us to stay in our homes that you say we can live in. The school system stinks. Dude, I went to school from first grade to seventh grade. Like I said, I'm a Barrows alumni, and I went to Parker Middle School. So, right around the corner, I know where I'm at. We're right by K, you know. You don't have to tell me how to get around here. So, you know, imagine coming from these school systems and going to High Park High School. And the educational system was like, I was like, whoa, why am I in sophomore year? And he can't say a full sentence out loud. There's no way that would have happened in Reading. Just no way. No way. I'm looking at math class. We didn't have any books. So how am I supposed to learn if I can't learn at home? I actually need to do homework and math to learn this stuff. And it was geometry. And the teacher, you know how you know, the nerve to tell me? Tell me. When I went after school to get some help, oh, go look in the book. Oh, the book I can only use in class. Okay. Cool. Thanks for teaching me this year. That's what I learned at High Park High School. But then we got Reading High over here, and y'all have a really great school system, great football team, great everything. And it stinks that black kids have to go to schools where the lunches are disgusting. It stinks that black kids don't get to learn. Do you know how many of us are so far behind when we go to college? Most of us don't even test into college, like entry college classes, because we cannot write, we don't know math enough, we don't know English enough, we can't write a proper sentence, put a, put a pronoun and a, and a verb or whatever together, like, they have no idea. PEMDAS what? Like, I've had arguments with black folks about PEMDAS, like, legitimate arguments with them. I don't even know what you're talking about, like, parentheses, like, that stuff. Yeah, people have arguments because they don't even know how to use PEMDAS. That's what Boston Public Schools did. So, you know, I loved Reading. Taught me a lot. Taught me a lot. I loved it all year. I wouldn't be who I was, I am today without it. You know, I can totally. I can say it. I can say it. All right, that was it, y'all. No, no. You can follow me. I'll just no, no. And thank you for Filmo for inviting me. Latoya for putting this together. I don't. I can tell you to put it together. I really appreciate like y'all reaching out to me. I was able to share my story with each and every one of y'all. God loves you. Rejoice always, pray continuously. Please give a big round of applause to Nona. How's everybody feeling? Raise your right hand. Now raise your left. I just wanted to see if you could follow directions. You did great! <laughs> I love when people are participatory. I'm glad everybody's having a great time. I'm gonna announce our next speaker up to the mic. Please welcome Fillmore! Woo! redundant after a while. I'm quite surprised at my age that I would still be dealing with such issues in my life, including a pandemic and a recession all in six months. I mean, I'm already being judged based on the color of my skin and my capabilities already, all whilst the, all whilst the pandemic is occurring. What did I do wrong? Did I free slaves using the Underground Railroad? Was I the first person to die during the American Revolution? Did I sit in the front seat of a bus where only white people were allowed? Did I establish red lines through neighborhoods which gave unequal housing opportunities? Or did I set the record as the fastest man on the planet? Or did I create a health system, healthcare system that is a place 
which is disproportionately ineffective to prenatal black women who are one of the many people and victims affected by COVID-19. The answer to all these questions is no, because I would be an Olympian track athlete, millionaire that would have the perfect healthcare system for everyone, all while running around America saving little black boys and girls from pushing up daisies. All jokes aside, I think it's important to relate the fact that I'm just like each and every one of you who stand in front of me today. I forget to make my bed sometimes. I go to sleep late because I'm a night owl. I drive like a mass hole and I swear like a sailor. The point of the matter is I make mistakes just like the rest of you. However, the mistakes I make can cause me to lose my life. I can't get upset in public. You don't drive at night with your hood on. You cross the street when you're walking the same direction as white people because they get paranoid. The list goes on. And this is just the tip of the iceberg in the life of a black man. And so I read to you a poem that I created myself. I are named it the Black Man's Alphabet. A is for the average lifespan of a black man in America, which is six, which is 74. But where I come from, it's 26, depending on what lifestyle you're trying to live. B is for Biggie. No, I'm just kidding. Brianna's Taylor's family is the one who should be winning. Please say her name. Say her name. Breonna Taylor. C is for the criminal justice system, which needs to be reformed because it's not built to protect me. D is for demanding justice for the countless lives lost to police brutality. E is for the environment that some of us live in, which do not provide the same opportunities unlike what I was given. F is for the fight that some of us as black men deal with internally every day when we step foot out of our homes. G is for having to go out of your way to fit into a system that isn't built for you to fit in. H is for hate that is received from people who judge you based on the amount of pigmentation in your skin. I is for integrity, something my father taught me, something that we must walk with, because the only two things that you have in this world is your last name and your integrity. J is for the justice system that needs reform. K is for the pointless killings that currently occur between civilians and cops. L is for the lies that are told through the media when it comes to what is occurring around us. M is for mad, something that we can't afford to be in this world because it, because it would cost us. That just resonates with me on the way. It's not just, <laughs> can't afford to be mad, period. <laughs> Period. With the teeth. <laughs> Excuse me. N is for the night spent reflecting on what it is to be a black man in America. I can guarantee you none of you want to sit in my shoes. Mm -mm. Oh, it's for oh shit. I thought that was a cop car behind me, but it's just someone driving a Ford Explorer. It's for the peace of mind, because at the end of the day, I think that's what any of us as black men want in this world. Q is for all the questions I have for what has occurred since the protest in this town. And according to this lady, not much has changed. It's still the same. So what are we gonna do about it? R is for rage. The way in which I feel inside when I educate myself and realize all the wrongs that I've let occur right under my nose. S is for Sandra Bland. Sandra Bland. S is 
is for Sandra Bland. T is for Tamir Rice. T is for Tamir Rice. U is for understanding. Because that's the only way we can get rid of hate in this world. V is for violence, which is rooted in racism. V is for violence, which is rooted in racism. W is for why the hell do I have to wake up every day and deal with this BS? Every day I deal with this BS. I wake up, I walk outside, BS. I walk down the street, BS. I interact with people who don't know me, BS. <laughs> That's just how it is. X is for the xenophobia that occurs in our gentrified neighborhoods. Y is for the youth because at the end of the day, they're the ones who are largely at risk. And lastly, Z. For that's the amount of Z's I need after a long day of just being a black man in America. Thank you. Feel more fun for a second. Y'all ready for our next speaker? Yes? I need all the love, all the yells, the claps, the snaps, if you can, for your very own Latoya. I think I told someone this earlier, but making this event made me feel really old, like I'm adulting. Um, it's a good feeling, but I want to go back a little bit. <laughs> um, so I have two poems for you guys today. Um, let me start off with the first one. A poem to dark-skinned women. I do not know where to start, so I'll start from the bottom of your feet. The amount of times you have had to stand up for yourself makes me tired. Bodybuilders have nothing on you. They lift waste. That's cool. You lift black men that spit on you with children that resent you with a house you can't even rest in, with a world that rapes you. You cannot reach for anything, so you have to use your calves to tippy-toe around this earth. Your thighs are burning, but you do not have time to heal. You do not have time. So you move on. So I move on to your waist. They ask, why are you so curvy? Do not lie to them and tell them it is in your genes. Tell them the truth. Tell them you gave birth to this world. Tell them you are mother nature and gave birth to them. So next time they think about disrespecting you, tell them I bought you this world and I can take it right back. You are a one woman show who you play God to. And we never go hungry, your chest is all we need. Your shoulders are always up high. You do not slouch because that means rest and you are too busy using your biceps to carry your trauma and depression. Uh, uh, say it, say it. Your forearms cannot block anyone. They always find a way to steal your grain of self-made happiness right from your hands. And they know damn well you broke necks to make that. Yes. They try to break you, mm. but tough chin. Knockouts are not in your vocabulary. Jaw is glued in place. Chins, jaw is glued in place. Lips so full, they made a challenge for you, but then covered it with white skin and called it the Kylie Jenner lip challenge or whatever, but we know the truth. Keep it, keep it, keep it. Um, and with your nose, you smell the plastic from here. They spend millions of dollars to look like you, and from what you see, 
in the mirror with your own two eyes. You got that shit for free. You are blessed because you are a queen. You carry a crown on your head, tangled and filled with so much life. It reminds me of a tree. It gives so much love, so much air. Without you, we would be dead. So that was a poem to dark-skinned women. I feel like we don't get enough hype. Yes! When I wrote that poem, when I wrote that poem, I was just looking through a list of black women and black trans women that have gotten beaten down for centuries and no one cares. And every time I look at that list, it just makes me sad. But I also have a realization that that is what society is about. They don't care about black women and little girls that are growing up right now are going through a lot right now. Mm. So please take care of them. My next poem, it's because I live in Reading. Um, the poem is called, My Whitewashed Blackness. The washing away of my blackness was a funeral to Africans. To them, I brushed my tongue with bleach to wash away my accent. The bleach would soak in and help my tongue lose my Swahili, not able to speak my language without English words colonizing my sentences. Mm. To them, I traded my pounds of seasoning for a grain of salt. Oh. I have zero flavor. I am useless. How am I going to cook for my husband? How am I going to serve my husband? How am I going to be happiness for my husband? I am useless. To them, I was born for my husband. The washing away of my blackness was losing my black card to my black friends. Mm. To them, I lost my black card when I sent them my country playlist. Oh. <laughs> to them, I lost my black card when I started talking about feelings. <laughs> to them, I lost my black card when they heard me code switch. Real quick. To them, I never had it. To them, I never passed the test. To them, I am a bootleg version of black. Yes. The washing away of my blackness was progress to white folks. Mm. To them, it was a celebration, a big party. It wasn't just for me. I saw other whitewashed black kids were all socially awkward, so no, we did not say hi. To them, I was a true American. To them, if I kept up the good work, I won't have to get shot for breathing black. To them, if I wash myself enough, they might start calling me nigga instead of nigger. To them, to them, to them, what about me? Because to me, I'm so black I listen to all music because it all comes from us anyway. To me, I'm so black, my melanin can feed a whole village. To me, I'm so black, when winter comes, my skin melts off. To me, I'm so black, I had massive in insecurities in third grade, like a lot, like I actually made a list. To me, I'm so black, I let my teacher say the N-word, then smile because my white peers are getting educated. Oh. To me, I'm so black, I learned the history of the N-word very recently, then felt guilty because I let a lot of white people get away with it. Now I cannot look at them the same, but I still dab them up because conflict is not a very good color on me. Oh, oh. I'm done. <laughs> yes, sir. To me, I'm so black. My first best friend was a racist. Mm. And I knew from the beginning but I did that thing Trump does when people find out his friends are rapists, ignore.
We are still, we are not friends anymore, but sometimes in the middle of the night, I think to myself, I should text her. But then my dignity finds me. To me, I'm so black, I thought black people were actually ugly for a while. Mm. To me, I'm so black, I'm so black, I'm whitewashed. Mm. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you. missing out on something, mm. missing out on my identity. For a long time, I have felt like I have a hole in me. Mm. I have felt like I'm invisible, even though I could be in a room filled with my friends. This poem is me. It defines me in multiple levels. I am not a stereotypical black person, and a lot of black people are not a stereotypical black person. We're all different. We all do different things. We all like different things. And I feel like the world needs to put, stop putting us in a box. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Latoya. You are incredible. This was abs that was absolute. I don't even. I don't have words. Um, I don't right now. I just give it up for Latoya. your whole existence. So thank you for that. I am supposed to do a poem after that. And when I got here, I, I didn't know what I was gonna do. And then I had a couple conversations with some folks and I said, okay, I know what poem I'm gonna do. But after that, I definitely know what poem I need to do. Um, so this is called Origin. It speaks directly to identity. I am 36 years old. I still struggle with my identity. Um, not only do I still struggle with my identity, but I hear our youth still struggling with owning their own. And it's sad that we live in a world that we can't just be free. So I'm going to spit this poem. And I, too, grew up in the Cape in Hyannis, Cape Cod. I moved down south for, for a little while and then moved back up north. So I understand your experiences when you talk about Reading. I understand what you talk about when you say your peers as friends and words and being called nigger. It sucks. It's more than derogatory. It's disrespectful. Period. 
end the conversation, right? Yeah. So, with that being said, thank you, Latoya, because I'm gonna give y'all origin. And I also wanna thank you in front of everybody for our personal conversation that we had on Zoom. You changed my life and the way that I teach my kids. So thank you, thank you. I'll never forget the day I asked my mother why wasn't I born white? The look on her face as if I slapped her with the years of oppression she's faced. She replied, Amanda, never say that again. My father, a strong, black, proud man goes to the store. He comes back with a kit to help me assimilate. As he sits me on the chair, he pulled out a jar of white cream. This was the beginning. As he, as he applied that smelly chemical to my hair, I was reminded of all the white girls in class asking me why my hair wasn't straight like theirs. Mm. Why is my hair so curly? As I slicked back my hair only to display my waves similar to my ancestors' journey, I was embarrassed, yet this cream would allow my hair to be straight, the ability to blend in. One, of only three black kids in my entire elementary school being called names like porch monkey and nigger mm. growing up in cape cod the arm on a map of a country that never embraced me in a hug i didn't belong going to my grandmother's house at age 11 in south carolina didn't help either i learned of the bigotry within my own family tree no black blood allowed on these leaves. Portuguese bloodline was not supposed to be mixed with anything to remain pure. My genes were contaminated with black blood so I'll never fit. Mm. Portuguese heritage was never to be taught to me. No culture, no family values, no musical roots. Why does my family reject me? But grandma, Grandma called me her brown sugar baby, obsessed with my skin tone. She embraced me because she broke the lineage chain when she made my mother with that black man. But my grandmother died before I ever got to ask her why, why she decided to make my life harder. I'm now in a household full of all white faces and I'm displaced. My school is predominantly black. Dismissed by my own people due to my white proper voice. Mm. Mm. How do you sound white? Ow. How do you sound black? Ow. Color has no sound. If it did, what would that even sound like? Yellow Bone is now my new nickname along with Oreo and Mulatto. I'm now not black enough. My hair is too straight. No coils for my fingers to wrap around. Why do they discriminate against me? Haven't we, black people, faced enough? Mm. I'm tired. I'm tired of disparities. Light skin versus dark skin field versus house but they want me to be pro-black though according to them i'm whitewashed colors should only be separated in washing machines when will this cycle end when will this cycle end I just want to be accepted, accepted from both races. I am enslaved in my own skin. They tell me to go back home. But my body is my home. Mm. Why would I ever, ever want to leave? Escapism isn't a choice for this vessel. I, we, Latoya, just want to belong. Thank y'all. Yeah. 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 Yay! Your phone. Yay! Your phone. Free can't hear me. I need your phone. <laughs> Thank you.
love y'all. Um, well, Latoya, I love you. Woo! I have one piece um, called What is Ignorance? Um, it's love. Uh, so, like, it's cool being an, an artist, right? But it's never really cool to be asked by white people what it feels like to be black. Um, it sucks. Period. Like, do you want to trade places? So I was going to read this poem, but I'm like, nah, we're not doing this. Trans lives matter. Go yes. on. Black Go lives on. matter. Yes. Queer lives matter. Yes. Black lives matter. Yes. Trans lives matter. Yes. Queer non-binary non lives matter. Yes. Period dot. I pride myself on not only being a queer, black woman, but I'm also a single mother, so that means Woo! I get stereotyped a lot, oh, no. period dot. But I stand up here today and I always say not no more, because I'm gonna always be 1,000% me in all of my queerness, yeah. okay. in all of my blackness, yeah. all of my womanhood. So I was gonna do what is ignorance, because I say all of those things, but I'm gonna tell you what it feels like when someone asks you what it feels like to be deprived as a black person in America. But before I do this piece, I think I have everybody's attention. Can I get you all to either hum or light sing? I don't know what people's vocals are like or their experience. We me, me, me. <clears throat> exactly. So once again, I say things kind of that come full circle because the universe just works like that. We're all connected. So earlier I had said we're all 70% in more made up of water and that when you hear sounds, they ripple and vibrate through your body. So I want all of us for a moment. I know there's traffic. I know we're outside, but I want you all to join in with this piece and be on the same frequency because we're human first, period. So if you could do this. Beautiful, a little louder and I'm gonna come around you all have your masks on, and I need to hear you. A little louder on this side. You guys are beautiful. <laughs> and keep it going. And the louder that you go, the more higher our vibration travels through one another. So this is all on y'all. If you want to feel connected, get rooted. Deprivation. We can't breathe. Hands up, don't shoot. Please. I have no weapon. Freeze. All I have is my voice. Chalk lines, caution tape. We hail cabs that won't stop. Too dark, too late, they don't feel safe. Go to college, obtain two degrees. Still treated like second class citizens. No identity, yet check the ethnicity box. Assume labels, single mothers, Debbie dads, welfare checks. Do you even have a job? European names like Amanda and Gregory guarantees interviews. Looks of disappointment once they see you. We've been lied to. This country isn't ours. Go back home, practice patriotism, anger. My stomach aches, it bubbles like warm shaken soda. But smile, hide your pain. Collared shirts, iron pants, we still get slain. Proper English, urban dictionaries. Puppets, not people, we're minstrel shows. Humans, detained like animals. Jail cells, reminiscent of animal cages, unfair and unequal wages. We have no pride left. We feel dead inside. We all just want to be. We 
all just want to feel. We all just want to breathe, be, feel, stay alive. Deprivation. to love you, I just do. You exist, you are worthy, you are beautiful, you are love and you are light. So I thank everybody who participated in that. I felt it, thank you. No, no, thank you. I can feel you, sis. Um, are y'all ready to welcome our next speaker to the mic? Yes. Please give it up for Deja. John Legend. Um, I picked the song because like it really hits close to home. So here we go. <laughs> He's a funny. Okay. <laughs> One day when the glory comes, it will be ours. It will be ours. Oh. When the war is won, we will be sure, we will be here sure, oh glory, oh glory. Hands to the heavens, no men, no weapons, formed against, yes glory is destined. Every day women and men become legends, sins against our skin become blessings. <sighs> Sorry. <laughs> <Stop>. <laughs> <laughs> Once and died, his spirits. Oops. Sorry, I'm a little nervous. You know that apologize. Sins that go against our skin become blessings. The movement is a rhythm to us. Freedom is like religion to us. Justice to us. Just a position in us. Justice for all just ain't specific enough. One son died, his spirit revisited in us. To our living in us. Resistance is us. That's why Moses sat on the bus. That's why we walk through free revision with our hands up. When it goes down, we women and men up. They say stay down, and we stand up. Shots, we on the ground, camera panned up. King pointed to the mountaintop and we ran up. One day, when the glory comes, it will be ours. It will be ours, oh, one day, when the war is won, we will be sure, we will be here sure, oh, glory, oh, glory. Someone's now for every man, woman, and child, even Jesus got his crown in front of a crowd. They marched with the torch and we gone run with it now, never look back. We gone down a hundred of miles. From dark robes he rose to become a hero. Facing the league of justice, his power was the people. Enemy is lethal. Saw the face of Jim Crow under a bald eagle. The biggest weapon is to stay peaceful. We sing our music as the cuts that we bleed through. Somewhere in the dream we had an empathy. Now we write the wrongs of history. No one can win the war individually. It takes the wisdom, it takes the wisdom of elders and young ones, people energy. Welcome to the story we call victory. The lumen of the Lord, my eyes have ever seen the glory. One day, when the glory comes, it will be ours, it will be all ours. One day, when the war is won, we will be sure, we will be here sure. Oh, glory, oh, glory, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs>
beautiful. Yes. Thank you. Y'all give it up for Deja again. Woo! So we're gonna invite our next speaker to the mic. Kimma! Give it up for Kimma! All the love, all the love, all the clap. Can we just have a round of applause for everybody that's spoken this far? I just want to, I'm going to read a speech and thank everybody, but before I do that, I just want to thank my mom, and I want to thank my dad, and I want to thank my sister for just being here and for supporting me. I want to thank my mom for being the strong Indian woman who came to this country at the age of six, who came from nothing. And I love my mom. And I love my grandmother, who I never met, and I just love my culture. Yes. So, my name is Kim Hall, and I'm a rising senior at RMHS and a co-organizer of this event. Thank you. As a person of color who has lived in Reading my entire life, I never would have expected an event like this to ever happen in town, especially an event that is youth-led. As a group, we the youth would like to take a moment to acknowledge all the people who have been involved in planning this event. So can we get another just round of applause for everybody? Because without them, this event wouldn't even have come to fruition. And now I'm going to read some of the names. They include, but are not limited to, Jennifer Blackman, Woo! Lori Holden, Woo! Linda Snowdoxer, Woo! Jessica Bailey, Woo! Allison Sillers, Anne Marie Corey, Sharila Lestrade, Ann Schultz, Woo! Steve Peacock, Woo! Kristen Tower, Caitlin McCurry, Cecilia Peacock, Megan Fiddler Carey, Gina McCormick, Woo! Craig Murray, the Reading Cooperative Frank, and the Te and the Reading Times Chronicle. Thanks, to, thanks also to family and friends and teachers for their continued encouragement. And a special word of thanks to our host, Amanda Shea, for taking time out of her busy schedule to be the MC tonight. Amanda, you are an inspiration both through your poetry and your presence. Thank you. the youth, we would also like to thank each of you for coming out tonight in support of our poets and artists. Your support is greatly appreciated and means the world to us. To be seen, heard, acknowledged, and supported by you gives us young artists and activists great encouragement. As we near the end of tonight's event, I would like to remind everyone that this is just the beginning of We the Youth's mission to create change aim aimed at ending racism through education. <laughs> ending oppression through empowering voices of color and bringing awareness, voice, and equity to marginalized communities, not only in our community, but in the larger community called humanity. <laughs> Change is created by intent, choice, voice, education, and action. Each one of us has the power to create change. We the youth urges everyone here to commit to being an active participant in ending racism. color and their culture are much more than trending news or social media stories, topics of opinion or debate. Just like anyone else, just like you, we demand respect, 
dignity, and the freedom to live our lives without the fear of being harassed, jailed, or simply killed because of the color of our skin. As we prepare for the upcoming school year, we, the youth, make a promise here and now to stand up against injustices that not only target people of color, but the LGBT community and the many other marginalized communities that are fighting for equal treatment. Yes. We ask you to join us in this promise. We must do this not only for ourselves, but our family, friends, community, and future generations. Thank you. We want you all to take this time to look around at the art, purchase some art if you can, support and keep supporting, and just vibe out with us. Take this time to meet and greet and talk to someone that you have not talked to yet. Take this time to get to know somebody that you don't know. That's what we're here for. And I just want to thank you all for having me. I'm Jim Marin Tears. Um, I'm just really, 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 really impressed, inspired. And I admire all of you for the work that you're doing. You all are the future. Keep preaching. Keep speaking. Use your voice. Amplify all voices. Black lives matter. Trans lives matter. I'm going to keep saying that. So thank you all for having me. This was an honor. I love you all. Thank you.